hoy. Yo, what's going on guys? Today I'm gonna bring you an epic tutorial. Yeah, I said epic. How's the tutorial epic? Well, because this plugin is so awesome. It's probably one of the best plugins I've ever done. So if you don't know what Team Fortress 2 is, basically it's like domination except way better. So on this game there's two teams and they can choose any class out of the classes shown. Basically the red team just has to capture all the points and the blue team has to try to defend them off. So with this plugin you're going to also want to get two other plugins called Tag API and World Edit. It's not going to work without it so make sure you have that. Alright so once you're ready just go ahead and click download for all of them. Alright and then you'll go to the next page and you just have to click download again. So all the links are in the description, make sure you click on those links. Then just do what I'm doing here. Okay, so you should have three things. World Edit is in a zip file. If you don't have WinRAR or 7-zip, make sure you download that. That'll be in the description. But all you have to do for World Edit is just open it up and just drag this WorldEdit.jar inside your plugins folder. Alright, once you got that, we got World Edit taken care of. Now drag tag API in there and Team Fortress 2 dot jar in there. So you should have the three dot jars in there now and once you're ready just go ahead and start your server. Alright for this tutorial I'm just gonna create my own map because it's not that serious that I have such a huge map but they recommend you download this map called Dust Bowl and it's really made just for Team Fortress 2. But if you download this map make sure you take away all the command blocks because it could cause some lag if you have it there. And they're kinda they're just not needed. So that'll be in the description and once you're ready we're going to go ahead and go inside our plugins folder you just see a new folder called team fortress 2 tf2 so now just right click on the config.yml hit edit with notepad or notepad plus plus i use notepad plus plus it's a lot easier that will be in the description too if you want it all right and the first thing that you should see is countdown this is in second so this is the countdown to when the game's going to start so it's going to go down 10 seconds and then the game will start so the capture timer is the amount of seconds that a player has to stand in the capture point to fully capture it. The auto start percent, basically what this is, when we go into the game we're going to set the max amount of players. So let's say if you set the max to 8, then 50% of that is 4, so you're going to need 4 players. And once 4 players are in the game, then it'll basically auto start itself. So if you want like 75% or 80%, then you can do that too. Donor button, no perm. In the game we're going to have classes and for the players to select the classes they basically just have to press a button. And some buttons are donor buttons, basically just buttons for donors only. So if they don't have the certain permission then they can't get that donation class, it's only for donors. And that's just what it'll say. AFK timer is the amount of seconds before a player will get kicked if they're not moving. Kill streaks 5, auto update, um, potion effects after start. If you have this on true, then the players have to wait until the countdown is done, the game has started before they can, you know, use their potion effects. Alright, prevent inventory moving, broadcast winning team, map rotation. This this is a cool thing if you want the maps to rotate out, or they can just choose their own maps to play on. Scoreboard, true. You can change a bunch of these things. Kill sound, you can actually change the kill sound. There will be a link in the description for the sounds. They're all right here. You can change it to anything that you want. That'll be in the description. It's going to be a lot of stuff in the description. Stats database. If you have a MySQL database, you can keep the stats in here. Just put your database information there. And then here are the classes. You can actually create your own classes too. And But they already have a lot of classes here. And with these classes already, you can change the armor that it provides. You can also change what's it, what it comes with. So like it comes with these items here. You can change the potion effect and there will be a link in the description for all the list of potion effects that you can possibly use like confusion, regeneration, stuff like that. And you can also change the enchantments. There will be a list of enchantments in the description too. So that's all up to you guys. If you want to create a new class, all you have to do is enter in a new line, backspace all the way, then line it up to where all the other classes are. So that's about two spaces. So after you're back here, just space twice and then type the name of your class, hit colon. Basically you just copy the format of all the rest. Once you're done, just hit save, reload, restart your server, and then we're going to head on Minecraft for the setup.
By the way, from what I explained about the donors button, you're going to want to give this permission to the donators class or whatever rank you have for the donators. You're going to want to give them that so they can use the donator classes. And then of course, give the rest of the permissions to your normal players and default players. And once you're ready, we're going to actually go ahead and get started with the setup now. Alright, so once you're in Minecraft server, you're going to need a couple things. The first thing you're going to need is a global lobby. This is going to be the lobby for all of your maps, every map that you create. This is where the players go to find a map that's on a sign and right click to join it. And then of course you're going to need a map either created or downloaded. Just have a map and for that map you're going to want to have two lobbies for the blue and red team. The blue is the defending team and the red is the attacking team. So just make sure you have those two lobbies for your map. And then inside of your map you're going to also want to have capture points. These capture points are where the red team will go, stand here, wait five seconds, or whatever you set in the config file, and then that point will be captured. So I've indicated my points with diamond blocks. You don't have to, but it just helps me see where it's at. So once you're ready, we're going to go ahead and get started with the commands. The first command is to set the spawn of our global lobby. So just go to the global lobby, stand in there anywhere, and then just type the command slash tf2 set spawn lobby. Alright, should have set the global lobby. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to select the whole map and then create the name for it. So just type the command slash slash wand and this will pull out the wand tool. Basically we're going to start from the top and then go to the bottom. We're going to first left click for the position one at the top corner any top corner so just left click on that I already have it selected so that's why it's not showing up now we're gonna go diagonally across just like this and to the bottom so you might have to break a block just to because this is the actual floor level not this this is a floor level so just make sure you get where you want and right click I have it selected too but once you have both those points selected after left clicking and right clicking then just type the command slash tf2 create map and then give this map a name I'm just gonna call it tutorial so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the max amount of players just type the command slash tf2 set player limit now your map name so I'll call my tutorial and then the max amount of players my max is gonna be four just hit enter and it should work so now we're going to set the delay for the red team before they can start and obviously because they're attacking and we want to give the blue team some time to set up they were going to want to put some seconds for them to be delayed so just type the command slash tf2 set red tp the map name and then the amount of seconds so I'll give the blue team 30 seconds to set up before the red team can spawn and just hit enter now we're going to set how long the match lasts is just type the command slash tf2 set time limit the map name and then the time so I'm just going to type a random number so now after we just did that command we're going to set the spawn for the lobbies and then the spawns for where the teams actually spawn at so just follow my lead the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go inside the blue lobby we're going to start with the blue lobby and then we're just going to type the command slash tf2 set spawn and then the map name so this should bring up a GUI menu you just find where you're at we're in the blue lobby so I'm just gonna click that alright so that was pretty cool it was it was easier to you know find and set up so we're just gonna type the same command just hit T go in the chat and then press the up arrow on your keyboard should bring the most recent command or you can just type the command again and once you have it just hit enter so obviously we're in the red lobby now just find the red lobby click on it and it's been set so now we're gonna go to the place where the red team spawns this is where they'll spawn for me I'm just gonna type the command again find the block for it and click it now we're gonna find the spawn for the blue team I'm gonna have it right here for them type the same command click on that block and then there you go so now what we're going to do is we're going to set some class buttons. With this command it's just going to give us a button that the players can right click on and it will give them that class. 
So just go into your first lobby. You can choose whichever lobby you want to start out with. I'm going to start out with the blue lobby. Once you're ready, just type the command slash tf2 create class button. And then now this is where you can either set it for the normal people or the donator people. I talked about this earlier. Obviously the donator people will be able to use the donator button. So if you want that, you just type donator. I'm just going to start out with normal and then the class name. So you might have to bring up the config file to find the name of the classes like heavy, scout, soldier, pyro. And then just go back and type one of the class names and just hit enter. It will give you a button. You place it on the wall. You can put some signs up like, hey, you click this button to choose the pyro class or something like that. So basically that's how you set up the class buttons. So now we're going to set some capture points where the red team will come here and wait five seconds to capture this point. I'm going to set my first one right here. So just type the command slash tf2 set capture point your map name and then start off with one. So that's ID one and then of course the next one will be two and then the next one after that will be three, four and it'll keep going depending on how many you have. So it's just basically the same command just change the number at the end and go in order like that. So my next one will be three. I'm just going to type the same command and then just change the number. Alright, so now that we're done with that, we're just going to make sure everything went well and just type the command slash tf2 check data and then your map name. And let's see, the only thing that we have left to do is that we have to create a lobby wall. So we're just going to go ahead and do that. That will be inside of our global lobby. The main lobby. So that I was talking about earlier. This is where the players will teleport once the game's over. So just go in here. Get some signs out. Now, on the first line, you're going to want to type in brackets TF2 close brackets. In the second line, you type map. And on the third line, you type the map name and bam it should work it should create a whole bunch of the crap right there not really crap this is actually useful stuff but there you go so you can have a whole bunch of maps if you want to have another one you can have it there 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 it's all up to you if you guys enjoyed this tutorial give this video a thumbs up make sure to subscribe to this channel I upload plugin tutorials all the time to help you guys out and uh, peace out guys I'm covering my ears like a kid.